Okay, so in this video, what we're going to discuss is uh, the uh, is Talens basically, which stands for transcription activator like um, effector nucleases. Okay, so let me write that down. And basically, what Talens are is they are another artificial nuclease uh, that we can use to cut DNA at incredibly specific uh, recognition sites. So Talon stands for transcription activator-like effector uh, nucleases. Okay, so um, basically, uh, these are a type of uh, end a restriction enzyme, which means that they are going to recognize a specific DNA sequence, and basically they're going to cut at that specific DNA sequence. Okay, so let me draw out a DNA sequence, and then I'll discuss what they are going to do. All right, so, uh, okay, so let's make up some nucleotides. So let's say G, C, T, A, A, G, T, uh, T A A A uh, G C C G A T C C G A T. How many have we got there? One, two, three, four, uh, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, and I think that's um, twenty-one, twenty-two. Um, so uh, we'll need two more. Uh, so let's have C and G. There, right. Then we'll put in the opposite, the complementary ones. Uh, C C G A T T C A A T T T C G G C T A G G uh, C C. No, no, C T um, A G. Okay, there we go. Right. So, uh, basically, what, what these talons are made out of is they are made out of transcription activator-like effector proteins, uh, which are often, um, often called just tails for short. So, transcription activator-like effectors. And basically, these are proteins secreted by certain bacteria known as Xanthromonas bacterium. Okay, so Xanthro, uh, Xan, Xanthromonas uh, species of bacteria uh, secrete these uh, transcription activator-like uh, effectors. Okay, and what is the function? What do these transcription activator-like effectors do? Well, basically, they are a protein which binds to DNA, and it binds to a specific nucleotide. So we are getting uh, very, very, very nice proteins now because this protein, this tail, this transcription activator-like effector is going to bind not just to a codon. I uh, remember in the previous video where we studied uh, zinc finger nucleases, the zinc fingers were binding to whole codons, but now these transcription activator-like effectors are going to bind to DNA at a specific nucleotide. So maybe adenine will have a specific specific transcription activator-like effector, which will bind to it. Uh, thymine will have a different transcription activator-like effector, which will bind to it. Now, this means that we can create very specific um, nucleases from this. And basically, what we do is uh, we have 24 here. Is that going to work? Uh, take 6 away from that, you get 18. Uh, so then we'll have 9 on each side. That seems a lot. Um, and you have six. Yeah, it's working fine. Right, okay. So basically, what you can do is you can use this to build nucleases, and this is how you do it. Uh, you uh, put in, you attach loads of these tails together, you attach loads of these transcription activator like effectors together to make a, a huge, great protein which has absolutely loads of these tails all together. So often you'll join about nine of them together. So you've put nine of them together now, and uh, all the ones uh, that uh, recognize G, I will color in one color. So these are all the same tail, which we've, a a we've bonded them all together to make a bigger one. But those are all the uh, transcription activator-like effectors which bind to G specifically. Then you obviously need dots that bind to C. So we've got one here that binds to C, so this one will be C. And then uh, these ones that bind to T are colouring green. So these are all a specific type of transcription activator effector 
um, an activator-like effectors. And finally, you have the uh, transcription activator-like effector, which binds to adenine. So we have bonded together all of these uh, transcription activator-like effectors. Uh, and now what we have is a great big protein that doesn't just bind to one uh, nucleotide. It binds to a whole sequence of nucleotides. It binds specifically to this sequence of nine nucleotides. And now it recognizes that entire sequence and will only bind if that entire sequence of nine nucleotides is there. Okay, now uh, what we do is attach half of an endonuclease enzyme to this. So we attach half of FOKL. Now FOKL is again uh, a nuclease which we got from bacteria. We got it from uh, flavobacterium, I think. Um, so um, it's it's. Uh, we, it's an endonuclease that is formed by two parts, basically. It only becomes active when the two parts dimize, and then it becomes an active endonuclease. Okay, uh, so you need the two parts to both be there in order for you to have an active enzyme. Okay, so right, so we attach the other half to a uh, tailum, which we're going to attach on, well, we attach the other half to a bunch of tails which we're going to attach to this other, um, this other, this complementary strand of DNA, basically. So, again, what we do is we create a whole, we attach a whole sequence of tails together, these transcription activator-like effectors. We attach them all together so that they recognize this sequence over here, this sequence of nine nucleotides. Okay, so there we go. So I'll colour those ones in too. So um, the G ones were a pink colour, so let's colour them in first. So these are all uh, transcription activator-like effectors which bind to G. And uh, then we had uh, C was orange, so all the transcription activator-like effectors which bind to C are going to be these ones here. Okay. Uh, T was green, so all the transcription activator-like effectors which bind to T will colour in green. And finally, A was ye uh, yellow, so we'll cover in all the transcription activator-like effectors which bind to A in yellow. So we've now created a whole sequence of uh, transcription activator-like effectors. We've bonded them together so that we now have this great big structure, this great big protein which recognizes this whole sequence of nine here. And we bond that sequence of nine to this other half of this FOKL enzyme. And basically what happens is that when we put uh, these two structures that we have engineered into the DNA sample, uh, this structure will bind here and this structure will bind here. Then what will happen is that the two halves of the FOKL enzyme will dimerize. They'll form a functional enzyme, and that enzyme will then cut these six nucleotides which are in this space in between. Um, and it will cut, basically, in a staggered way, so it will leave sticky ends. Uh, at, it will leave these overhangs, basically, of four nucleotides. Uh, but what's brilliant about FOKL is that it is not specific in itself. If if you look at other restriction endonucleases which cut sticky ends, like ECOR1, ECOR1 has a very specific uh, recognition sequence which it has to have in order to cut. So it needs GAATTC uh, basically, uh, with the complementary one here, CTTAAG. So basically, if we put uh, two halves of ECOR1 on here, you'd have to have that specific region in there. But basically, what's brilliant about FOKL is that you can have whatever six, um, new, uh, you can choose whichever combination of nucleotides you like in here, basically, which is what's very nice. Okay, so that's why we use FOKL. So all of the specificity basically is in um, is in deciding which um, which combination of transcription activator like effectors you want in these uh, portions of the talon. Okay, so this entire thing, uh, i.e., all of these nine uh, tails, all of these nine tails, and the two halves of FOKL, that is known as the transcription activator-like effector nuclease, or the TALEN for short. Okay, and again, just like zinc fingers, it is an extremely specific nuclease, because as you can see, this is going to require a specific combination of of about 18 nucleotides, and it's also going to require them to be positioned in specific places. So. 
it's going to be very, very specific. You can make these even more longer if you want, so they'll become even more specific. And that's the problem with uh, normal restriction ender nucleases, which you find in nature, such as ECOR1, that if you put that into the human genome, it will just cut all over the place, because it will find this combination, basically, uh, in a lot of places in the human genome, whereas you can make these specific enough that they may, might only uh, cut at one point in the genome, so you can target them very, very nicely. And these are actually preferable to zinc fingers because you can engineer them so well because uh, each one of the tails represent, uh, recognizes a single nucleotide, whereas t um, when you have zinc fingers recognizing a whole codon, it's more difficult to work with. You have less flexibility because, you know, there might not be a zinc finger that binds to specific every one of the 64 codons. So there might be some regions where you can't design a zinc finger to work. Uh, so this is much more nice because, you know, you can build this to recognize whatever sequence you want.